Hi, hello, and welcome to the second Architect of Games Q&A Extravaganza, a special type of video that I put out whenever I reach a subscriber milestone. In this case, it's a whopping 250 subs. Wow. I know, it's amazing, thank you for all your support, I never thought I'd reach two digits, let alone three. This is fantastic, thank you all so much. And no, before you ask, that dumb joke is not going anywhere anytime soon. As a way of giving back and showing you just how much I owe you a lot for sticking around, I've taken 10 of your most burning questions and I'm going to ask them for you right now. Hopefully you'll find the answers entertaining and possibly informative too. Okay, let's get started with J. Wow Moose, who asks, If you could choose one game to have a sequel or major update, what game would you pick? Well, there are a lot of ancient PC games that I think never got a fair shake or don't hold up very well today, like System Shock 2 or Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic, but for the most part, stuff like Kickstarter sort of has those games covered. So instead, I'll be altruistic and say Deus Ex. Now, you might be thinking that Deus Ex has already had two reboots, and you'd be right, but I think that not only is it a franchise with a lot of potential that's been continuously dicked over, it's also a very prescient game series as well, dealing with corrupt governments, information warfare, and <coughs> global pandemics. More generally, I think it's unfair how Square Enix gutted the development of the Adam Jensen series, and I'd love to see the final instalment in that trilogy, because the story of those games is pretty good, and they've got some cracking world design. What's not to like? Give us a third game, you cowards. What's the worst game that you like? asks Droid. Well, I think the most fitting answer to this is the original release of No Man's Sky, back when everyone hated it. The game has come a very long way since, and it's actually quite good now, but I thought the original version, where there was pretty much nothing to do but bimble around space and look at cool sci-fi things, was pretty interesting. Even if it wasn't that fun. Were it not for all the massive over-exaggeration and false advertising on the part of Hello Games, I think OG No Man's Sky would have been an interesting indie game rather than the firestorm it became. I don't actually like the game that much, but I think it's an interesting example of a game that everyone hated, but I actually saw the merit in. Vincent Martin's question is, which YouTube channel do you think should have more exposure? Well, if you ask me, there are a billion YouTube channels that are way better than mine and deserve more exposure than me, which is why I try to plug them at the end of most of my videos. But a personal favourite of mine will always be First Five, a short-form review channel that takes a look at the first five hours of games. It's a really good gimmick that has saved me quite a lot of time, and I think that it focuses on a really important aspect of game playing in the modern day, that being that not everyone can spend hundreds of hours waiting for a game to get good. It's fantastic, please check it out. I'll put a link in the description or something. Jason S asks, You can remove a single food item from existence as if it was never discovered. What do you choose? This is a really hard question, because part of me wants to say something that will improve the world in some way, or stop some sort of crucial resource being exploited, but I couldn't actually think of one. Then, I was going to say chives, because I hate them personally, but apparently those things are great for pest control and bees love them, so they're out too. So, at the risk of altering history too much, I'm going to say condensed milk, which sounds weird because it's very nice, but it was also the product that got Nestle started and they're pretty goddamn awful, so hopefully that's minimising the effect on history whilst also ensuring one of the worst companies ever never existed. Very good question by the way, I thought about it for way longer than all the other ones. Next is... What's a game that you love, but you don't think very many people know about? And that is from John D. Okay, so there are obviously a million answers here, but I think I'm going to go for my sweet baby Eternal. I love card games, and for me, Eternal has the readability and simplicity of Hearthstone, but the complexity of Magic the Gathering. And it's also not horribly expensive like either of those two. I know I plug it all the time, but they don't give me any money or anything, I just think it's good, and I want to see the scrappy underdog card game survive for like another year. Please play it, no one else does. What's the origin of the Fieral Carrot? That is asked by Nelson. Okay, so I'll keep this quick because it's a question that's been asked more than once and it's not a very interesting story. I came up with the Fieral Carrot, intended to be pronounced the Feral Carrot, when myself and a friend were trying to come up with cool internet pseudonyms. I came up with the Feral Carrot because I thought Feral was a cool adjective, and Carrot because I have orange skin and green hair. Then it turned out that someone already had that name, so in my infinite wisdom, I just decided to misspell it. Uh, hi, correctly spelled Feral Carrot. Uh, hope you're doing okay out there. We should meet up sometime and talk about how you stole my name. Patters' question is, which game, or series of games, would you say has had the biggest influence on you, either personally or towards your process of game analysis? I know some people are expecting me to say XCOM here, but without a doubt, that game is Spelunky. Spelunky is one of those games that does everything it sets out to do, 
basically perfectly. Almost every element is expertly balanced and interesting and has a load of depth to all the different gameplay systems. I was particularly attracted to the idea of how Derek Yu describes the process of the developer and player collaboratively making a narrative, and the idea has stuck with me ever since. If you've not played Spelunky or read the book about its design, then you are really missing out. Both are great, and I'm really looking forward to seeing if Spelunky 2 will ever approach the original. It, uh, it probably won't. Java Munks asks, How about your take on accessibility for disabled gamers? Speaking as someone who doesn't have any disabilities that affect the way I play games for the most part, I am not an authority on this at all, and that is basically my point. The best way to cater to disabled people with your games is to listen to actual disabled people and advocacy groups and just do what they say, because chances are they are way more knowledgeable than you are. This is also why I've not done a video on the subject, because all the information is already available by people who actually know what they're talking about, and it's arrogant for people with, say, normal vision to claim they know better than actual colourblind people. Just listen to disabled people, that's my advice, it's not that hard. Next up, what was your gaming history? What games did you play on what systems, what are your favourite game experiences, etc. And that is from Lapis3. So, my gaming history is reasonably diverse, I'm very lucky for my first game I ever played to be Mario 64, and I have very vivid memories of running around the starter area of Jolly Roger Bay, but for the most part, I think during my formative years I've very much been a PC gamer first. I got into World of Warcraft quite young, I played a lot of classic games because my PC couldn't run newer stuff, so I think I've managed to combine the elitism of old school games with the insufferable pretension of the indie game golden age of 6-8 to eight years ago. I'm basically the worst of both worlds. And finally, when did you feel like you really broke through on YouTube? Any video in particular that made a huge difference? And that is from Chow. The video where I really broke through on YouTube is without a doubt, how great games beat the grind. Up until that point I've been doing YouTube for just over a year and I had about a thousand subs, but after that one, oh boy, things kind of took off. I've had another big bump recently, but that was definitely the one that got me started and what convinced me that I could maybe pursue this as a career. I'm going to be completely honest and say that it's a pretty middling video looking back on it and its popularity was 100% luck, but I'm still grateful for you all who stuck around anyway. Okay, whew. Hopefully those questions and answers filled in some details of my mysterious backstory. Thank you for subscribing, commenting, and help. thank you for just watching the videos. I'm, it means a lot that you enjoy them, and I never thought I'd get this big. Thank you from the bottom of the cold metal processor where my heart should be. And just to show you how much I care, I won't torture you with the sound of my voice anymore. Stay safe, stay cool, and I will see you in the next video, which will come out in a bit. Bye!